Hey guys, it's Kara, and I'm here with a diabetes-related video, and this is about insulin therapy, which is, is the methods and the ways that you take your insulin, and there's different types. So, for instance, as you guys know, I take injections with a pen. Now, there are diabetics who take injections with little vials and actual syringes. There are diabetics who wear an insulin pump, and what an insulin pump is is a little device smaller than a cell phone, you know, probably even this big, you know, that has a uh, reservoir filled with insulin. This insulin should hold you between two to three days and it continuously in, uh, like puts it into your body like an IV would. So you're always getting insulin throughout the day. And when you eat, you program your phone or your pump, not your phone, program your pump to tell it how much to give you for your meal. That also goes with corrections, so if your blood sugar is high, you tell the pump how much to enter into your body. A pump is very convenient. I am not well versed in the pumps anymore. I did have a pump, but I was 13. So from 13 to 19 I had a pump, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> so pumps have changed quite a bit and they seem to be very, very awesome. They, they have a lot of functions and controls that you can do to make things easier on you. Now, if you're asking yourself why don't I have a pump, there are a few reasons. Um, I'll touch briefly on them. One, insurance. Uh, insurance is that think it's a convenience because you can inject yourself with insulin the same way. And even if insurance were to cover it, I could get an authorization to get it approved, but the cost of the supplies are outrageous. So cost is definitely a factor. And also I had issues with my pump. It would come out and I wouldn't know and I could go a day without insulin and I would figure it out, you know, when your blood sugar would go high and then it wouldn't comb down. But uh, I've been hospitalized because of the pump, because of issues. and. It was just a nightmare, but I'm sure, like I said, with technology changing, that might be different now. There is a fixed dose for insulin where people will have a certain amount of insulin throughout the day. Usually it's like in the morning and at night before. However, that type of insulin is a little bit different than the insulin that I use because my insulin's fast acting and then I have one that lasts all day. Those types of insulin is a combination of a slow acting insulin and a fast acting insulin and the combination between the two is supposed to cover for your meal and cover you for your, the day or half of the day. Um, that is actually how I had my insulin when I was first diagnosed because at that time that was pretty much the only type of way that was guaranteed to be, you know, workable. Now. I have a sliding scale insulin therapy and what that is called is um, you check your sugar before your meal, you find out what your blood sugar is, you will either give yourself insulin if it's too high and then calculate the amount of food that you're eating per your carbohydrates and give yourself a shot for that. Now with the sliding scale therapy for the insulin, that works best like I said with the insulin that I'm on. A lot of diabetics though have to wait maybe in half an hour before they eat or 15 minutes before they eat. It just depends on the brand of the insulin that they have, how quickly it is released. Mine is released between 15 and 30 minutes, but I can start eating and give myself my insulin and it will catch up. Or if I forget to take my insulin, if I take it immediately after I eat, it should kind of counteract and balance each other out so it's not that bad. And here's Buddy again. I hope she doesn't knock over anything. Okay, so a sliding scale is also something that we reference when your blood sugar is high. Now, what that means, there is a fixed rate of insulin you give yourself depending upon how high your blood sugar is. For instance, if my blood sugar is between 170 and 200, I give myself one unit. Now, that can change because it depends. Uh, have I just eaten? Has it been two hours since I've eaten? Or am I sick? So a lot of things can factor in. But usually how it works for me is one unit will bring my blood sugar down 50 points. Usually. <laughs> for instance, um, I'm looking on my phone for an example about how this works because I know how it works and in my 
had it make sense, but I don't know if I could verbally express it for you guys to understand. But when my blood sugar is high, there's a certain amount of insulin you take. And uh, it's all based on a sliding scale. There are insulin ratios. For me, my ratio is one unit for every 10 grams of carbohydrates that I have in the morning. So at breakfast and lunch and any snacks, but come dinner time, my ratio is one unit for every eight grams of carbohydrates. The reason why it's eight and not 10 is because I wake up and my blood sugar is higher than what it should be. So if I give myself more insulin per carbs, then my blood sugar shouldn't be as high as it was when it was one gram for, or one unit for every 10 grams. So uh, that is pretty much the different ways that you can have uh, your insulin given to yourself and um, the sliding scale method. So there is a science behind it and just like with science and things changing, it's not necessarily accurate all the time. Uh, that's really frustrating for me and I'm sure many diabetics are frustrated and I've seen people post on communities and boards about how their blood sugar was this, they gave themselves this insulin and it didn't do anything. And you have the freedom to do what you need to do to fix it. So if that means you log your, your blood sugars every single day, every time you test, and you see what you've eaten, make a food diary of what you've eaten, then you can see if maybe there's a certain type of food that your body didn't adjust to as well that you maybe need to tweak your insulin. I personally, I do have a, a a log, I can't talk, that I use on a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet. And actually my doctor loves me for it because it's all organized and I, I, I'm i an Excel junkie. Um, it's part of my job, so I blame my work that I take and I just put that into the Excel sheet. I don't do a food diary anymore because I know my carbohydrates and I just put the grams in it. Um, and there's Betty again. However, oh wow. <laughs> she wanted to get up and close. Yeah, close and personal with Betty. Anyway, I'm going to leave that in. What I was saying is I don't create a food diary. However, I will note if I had something like pizza or Chinese or something that's a complex carbohydrate, which means for me, complex means it doesn't always necessarily um, work the same way <laughs> every single time. So I'll note that. So then when my doctor looks at my readings and Betty can, okay, that um, she knows that's why. This is, this is, this is her telling me to stop. She's rubbing all over me. Oh. Anyway, so Betty says it's time for the video to end, but that is pretty much what insulin therapy means. It's how you take your insulin, the forms of insulin, and how you do it, whether it be injections, syringes, pump, um, and this is all specific to type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetics, that's a whole different like ball game. so this is just insulin therapy for type 1 diabetics. Now again, please subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of other diabetic videos up on it. I am going to continue to talk about other diabetic topics. I currently have, just, just stay. I currently have a contest going on because I have hit 100 subscribers. I'm giving away I'm giving away two gift cards to Amazon, each of value of $20. So go ahead, check out that video, and if you want to enter, go ahead, subscribe, and follow the rules. So until next time, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys later.